So my name is Casey Finlinson. I work with uh, I work for Central Utah Water Conservancy District as the conservation education director, and the water district is in charge of providing water to parts of eight counties here in Utah. Have you ever turned on the tap at home and wondered where is that water coming from and how is it getting here? Well, I have a theory that maybe it just comes from thin air and uh, we don't really need to worry about it. So I wanna, I wanna show you uh, my proof of that. Here we have a tap, water's just freely flowing out of it. Isn't that how it works? I mean, water just magically appears, right? Obviously, you guys are smart enough to know that this is just a trick and this isn't really how our, our taps work. But sometimes this is how we treat our water in the sense that uh, we feel that this is a never-ending resource and we're, we're not concerned about where it's coming from or what we do with it. So we as a water district manage and maintain multiple dams. A dam is a, is a structure like this built across a river that plugs up the river and creates a big bathtub full of water behind it, a man-made lake that we call a reservoir. So here's, a, here's an example of a reservoir. This is Jordan L right, in between Heber and Park City. You can see the dam is right here. We're up above it and the water's back, backing up behind it to create this reservoir. And uh, we, we don't build these so we can go water skiing, although that's a nice benefit from it. We actually build these to conserve the water, save it for when we're going to need it. This is going to be our drinking water, but would you drink water straight out of the reservoir? Hopefully you say no to that because um, you might get sick if you do. There's all kinds of stuff in that water, but we need to send that on to our water treatment plant. So here, here's a picture of our water treatment plant in Orm, just outside the mouth of Provo Canyon, where that water ends up. We pull that water off the Provo River and send it to this facility. And this is actually an older photo of the facility because it's been upgraded since then. Um, but you can see kind of what that looks like and where we clean that water and make it so that it's drinkable. And we send it on to the cities and various other agencies who then send it on to, to homes. And that's kind of the, the, the route that your water travels before it gets to your house. So let's look at that um, kind of all together. Here's kind of the overall picture of what that all looks like. I know this is pretty complicated, but you can see um, up in the mountains is where the, the water starts as snow, and it melts and comes down the Provo River, hits Jordanelle. We can fill that up. We also There's Deer Creek that can fill up and continues down the Provo River, and a lot of that ends up at Utah Lake. We want to make sure there's enough water in the lake, but some of it is pulled off right here at the Olmstead Diversion Dam and sent to our water treatment plant. And that's how we get that water to, to the plant and get it cleaned and move, move it on to um, some other facilities that eventually it ends up at your house. And there's all kinds of other stuff going on with a bunch of other reservoirs. We're focusing kind of on talking about uh, right here in, in Utah County. And I've got kind of a simplified form of this that I wanna show you as well. Here it is up in the mountains, coming down to Jordanell, going past the Heber Creeper and you're hitting Deer Creek. And here's where that Olmstead Diversion Dam is. And you can actually walk right past this if you go on the Provo River Trail. Water's pulled out and eventually gets to the water treatment plant there. We clean that, send it on to some, some water storage tanks and eventually to your home. That's kind of the path that water takes. You can see that it takes kind of a, a complex process to, to get to your home. And if you went through the, the water treatment plant, you could see kind of all the work that goes into making that water drinkable so that you have fresh water when you turn on the tap. So it doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from the mountains and snow melt is actually where a lot of that water comes from and kind of a cool process. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Uh, you probably understand that there are 50 states in this country and uh, maybe you've heard uh, where we rank on dryness. Driest state is of course Nevada. If you've been to Las Vegas, you'll uh, appreciate that and understand that. Uh, Utah is number two on, on dry out of the 50 states. So we're, we're pretty dry and that's nothing new to us. It's, it's a common thing, We've, we're used to it here. The, the trick is the new challenge that we are facing 
is, is not drought, but more uh, the population. So right now we're somewhere around 3.2 million people who live in the state of Utah. And in 40 years, by the year 2060, we're expected to have around 6 million people. So there's a lot more people that are gonna have to share the same amount of water. So we wanna make sure there's enough of this water to go around. Uh, what I wanna talk about here is just some of the ways that we use water. Uh, so we can kind of think about that a little bit and then maybe some of the ways that we can conserve water. So I've got my water bag here and with some items that all have something to do with water. So how do we use water? Well, we wash them with, with soap, hopefully, right? Recognize this thing, hose nozzle. This is something that we might be using if we're washing the car or washing our dog or spraying off the driveway or something. Toothbrush. We all like to brush our teeth. Have you ever had to brush your teeth like when you're camping and you didn't have a lot of water to use to rinse out your mouth and to put on your toothbrush? It's nice to have water. This big, big one here, life jacket. We like to play in water, right? Whether that's running through the sprinklers, swimming in a pool, water skiing in the Jordanelle. We use water for, for entertainment. And this, I know you probably won't recognize something like this. This actually comes out of the toilet. And uh, toilets is one of the highest uses of water. And we often don't think about that. So we, we, we flush our toilet. If this is your favorite shirt, you're going to wash it, right? So we wash our clothes. This is for dishes. We clean dishes. We wash our bodies. We drink water. Everybody drinks water. And we water our lawns. So we use water for a lot of things, and I didn't even cover all of them. So this pie chart represents our, our total water use at home, so our residential water use. And you can see that the biggest piece of that pie, 60% of our water that we're using at home, is actually used in our landscapes, so for our sprinklers. Um, there's, you can see toilets is the highest indoor use of water. That's the one in red, but it doesn't even um, compare to what we use outside. So of course there's things we can do. We want to uh, make sure that we're not watering at the hottest part of the day. We want to maybe not have as much lawn as the neighbors, things like that. And I know you guys aren't in charge of, of your watering schedule, but we try to avoid w windy times of watering as well. But uh, as, a, as a kid, what are some of the things that, that you can do to, to conserve water? Well. We want to make sure that our, our loads of laundry are full loads, same with our dishes, or if we're scrubbing the dishes by hand, you're going to use less water by um, filling up the sink instead of just leaving the water running. Speaking of water running, when we brush our teeth, we want to make sure to turn the tap off while we're actually brushing our teeth so we don't use water. Um, showering, I don't put a time limit on shower, but we get in, we get clean, and we get rinsed off and we get out. Don't need to feed, spend 20 minutes singing all of our favorite songs. If we're going to be washing the car, make sure to have this on the hose so that you can leave the hose running, but water's not coming out until you squeeze this. Otherwise, you just leave the, the water running. Uh, toilets. Well, don't flush trash down the toilet. Only flush it when you need to. And with, when it comes to drinking water, well, if you like cold water like me, you can put ice cubes in it, don't leave the tap running until your water's cold, or you can put water in the fridge so it's always cold. And of course, we always want to wash our hands, so I don't have a whole lot to say about that one. And if we're going to be like running through the sprinklers or something like that, we want to put that on the driest part of the, the yard, the lawn, so that we can at least get some benefit from that as well. So those are my, my recommendations. And there's, of course, lots of other things you could do to help conserve water. Again, my name is Casey with Central Utah Water Conservancy District. Um, you can learn more about what we do and some conservation information at our website, which is cuwcd.com. Uh, thanks for watching this video. And uh, remember that uh, where your water comes from and that it's important to, 
to use your water wisely and save that for future generations.